Well, thank you so much, uh, Representative Bonamici, for that kind introduction. Uh, I first want to say thank you to Speaker Pelosi. All of this work does not happen by accident. It happens because the Speaker decided, as one of her first actions in the 116th Congress, to impanel the Select Committee on Climate Crisis. And of course, it was no surprise because she's been such a tremendous leader throughout her many years here in Washington on solving the climate crisis. And so we thank her for her incredible leadership and for pulling together this committee. I also must take a moment to say thank you to our wonderful chairwoman, our fearless leader, uh, Chairwoman Kathy Castor. As a freshman member, I had not yet had an opportunity to interact with the chairwoman uh, prior to joining this committee. And I am so very grateful that I've had that opportunity because she has been such a thoughtful and inclusive chairwoman, uh, dare I say, one of the best chairs of any committee in the 116th Congress. And so we're all very grateful for her as well. Um, let me say this very clearly. I, climate change is an existential threat. We know that we have a very short runway for action, and the IPCC report makes v that very clear. It is getting shorter by the day, and there are far too many in this town, the President, the Senate, uh, who are standing by and watching as this crisis worsens by the day. Thankfully, that is not the case in the House of Representatives under Democratic control, because today we are acting by providing a roadmap that will truly solve this crisis. And in my view and in the view of my colleagues, that starts by trusting the scientists. If we don't listen to the science, if we don't put our politics aside to unite around this one global issue, the consequences will be catastrophic. As a result, it's critical that we make proper investments in science, that we equip federal labs across our country who are engaged in groundbreaking work with access to modernized facilities, proper resources, and that we safeguard scientific integrity at all costs. Colorado, my home state, is home to some of the most world-renowned federal research labs and climate scientists, 30 federally funded research labs and joint institutes across the state. And I was so grateful for the opportunity to welcome the chairwoman uh, and our colleagues on a bipartisan basis to Colorado for a field hearing last year. I'm grateful that the proposals I just mentioned are highlighted in the report, along with proposals to revitalize our nation's conservation corps, invest in regenerative agriculture, restore our forests and protect the beautiful public lands in Colorado and throughout our nation. I will also say this, Speaker, Assistant Speaker Ben Ray Lujan, future Senator Ben Ray Lujan said it very well. In Colorado, as is the case in New Mexico, climate change is not abstract. It is not distant. We have witnessed the impacts on our lands, our forests, our farms, and in our national parks. We see rising temperatures, earlier snow melt, increased flooding and erosion, more frequent wildfires, and we have experienced a disproportionate level of damaging climate-related disasters. But in Colorado, we've chosen to meet that crisis, and this crisis rather, with action. 15 towns and cities across our state, including half of them in my congressional district, have adopted 100% renewable electricity goals. We are a leader in zero emission vehicles and clean energy jobs and, and home, again, to some of the nation's most renowned federal labs. It's time for Congress and our nation to follow this lead. And so I say to you all today uh, that our work truly begins now. Now is the time to rebuild, to recover with climate action at the core of our agenda, to initiate bold change, and to put the future of our children and the future of our planet at the center. The National Climate Action propo proposes a roadmap, and it's our job to make it a reality. Congress must swiftly act on these recommendations because there is simply no time to waste. And with that, I want to introduce my uh, distinguished colleague from the great state of California, whose years of leadership in framing climate change as a national security issue fundamentally has been so critically important, Julia Brown.